a DeSantis America would be a much more inward looking America. And that is obviously very bad news for anybody in the UK that is hoping to have a, a closer special relationship. To take for granted American support for the British state, particularly in an environment of greater American isolationism, I think would be a mistake. During the referendum campaign in 2016, one of the claims made by those on the Leave side was that leaving the European Union would open the way to a, a closer and more fruitful relationship with the United States of America. That hasn't turned out to be the case, but at the time it didn't seem to everybody to be an entirely implausible assumption. There has been over the past 10 or 20 years a, a certain anti-EU strain in uh, American politics, well captured, well symbolized by Donald Trump and his friendship with Nigel Farage. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, American political attitudes towards Brexit, and in particular we're going to be asking whether the probable eclipse of Donald Trump as a result of the midterm elections uh, will be a, a favourable or a negative um, uh, factor in the future of Brexit. Um, I'm talking today with John Stevens, the chair of the Federal Trust. Um, John, it, it wasn't always so that uh, American politicians or American officials were hostile to the European Union. There was a time when they were rather well disposed towards the European Union and very definitely saw the United Kingdom's position as being in the, United, in the European Union, not necessarily as a Trojan horse, but certainly as a, a bridge towards uh, American interests. Um, when did that change? How, how did that change? Well, that was really a feature of the Cold War, that the Americans saw the European Union, the EC, uh, as the economic underpinning of NATO and the economic underpinning of European defence against the Soviet Union. And I think what happened at the end of the Cold War was there was a concern in some circles on the American right in the Republican Party that Europe, freed of the uh, shadow of the Soviet Union, expanding into the former Soviet empire, was becoming a major force, was becoming potentially a rival to America. And this was particularly true, I think, in the creation of the Euro. And there was a lot of American hostility to the creation of the Euro because they feared it would be a rival to the dollar. And in particular, I think they feared that the Euro with the city of London uh, would have been a serious proposition vis-a-vis uh, -vis the dollar. And so there was a significant American campaign from the right, from Republican circles, influencing the Conservative Party against joining the Euro. And of course, the anti-Euro campaign then morphed into something larger, which was to leave the European Union altogether. I'm not altogether sure that even in Republican circles, even in the circles that opposed the Euro, that what they really wanted was Britain to leave the European Union. I think there were other interests that came in later, but certainly the the fuel for the fire that led to Brexit, principally inside the Conservative Party, but then beyond, was originally initiated from American circles, certainly with significant American funding, for example. Then Donald Trump, in his attitude towards uh, international organisations in particular, multilateralism more, more generally, um, certainly seemed to represent and seemed to accelerate um, this hostility to the European Union. Uh, where do you think he stood on the question of the United Kingdom leaving the European Union? Well, I think Trump was hugely incoherent. He was attracted to Nigel Farage because Nigel Farage was seen to be symbolic of the upset, the enormous uh, anti-establishment vote that was Brexit. And of course, he felt he was doing the same thing in his own presidential campaign. And so that gave a certain kindred spirit quality to the relationship. But Trump never really had a, a very coherent sense of what should happen in Europe. His focus was China. And it, he felt that China was the principal threat to the United States. And in that respect, he wanted the Europeans really to look after themselves. So his criticism of NATO was that we don't want to waste resources on Europe. Um, he didn't recognize Russia as any sort of threat. He was very friendly with, with President Putin. Um, he wanted to focus American resources on Asia Pacific. 
And that's what made him hostile to the European Union, or very critical of the European Union, and very critical particularly of European contributions, continental European contributions to defence. It was one of the hopes of the um, Leave campaign uh, that a trade deal with the United States of America, a favourable trade deal, um, would be done quite easily and quite quickly as a result of Brexit. Um, was that ever a serious prospect? Did Trump really ever engage himself with that idea? Absolutely not. I mean, Trump was very much a kindred spirit with the Farage vision of Brexit in the sense that he's fundamentally a protectionist. He didn't have any sympathy, really, with those supporters of Brexit who had a, a global uh, Anglosphere view, a, a closer relationship between Britain and the United States and other English-speaking countries. Um, and his whole focus and the focus of the of the movement inside republicanism that he has created is very much uh, an isolationist one, fundamentally. So, so you think that it was a, a complete misapprehension that um, Trump would engage himself, uh, and perhaps even if he had attempted to engage himself in favour of a of, of, of a of uh, a an attractive um, trade deal between the United Kingdom and the United States of America, it would have been blocked by Congress and the various lobbies that um, uh, view with some suspicion um, the United Kingdom, not least for its role in Ireland. Absolutely. A anybody who knew anything about American trade policy and the factors that influence it would, would have realised that the prospects of the sort of free trade deal, uh, transatlantic arrangement that the Brexiteers were talking about was complete fantasy. And you're right that uh, there are other political aspects. Ireland, obviously, um, play a part in that. But the, the whole culture of American trade policy is fundamentally protectionist in nature and always has been. Uh, and the, the Republican tradition now that Trump represents is likely to make that even stronger. So that if we were to get a, uh, another Republican administration, either Trump or, or DeSantis, it would be a more protectionist one and therefore less likely to do any form of trade deal with, with the United Kingdom. You, you talked about the incoherence of Donald Trump. Um, there are people who um, represent DeSantis as, as simply being a more coherent and more competent, uh, less self-absorbed um, form of a, a re, re resurrection of Trump. Uh, do you think that's accurate? Uh, and if so, what would its implications be for Brexit? I think that is accurate. I think tr Trump was such a, a, a wayward character, is such a wayward character in so many ways, uh, had so little focus, uh, but um, a more coherent version of what he represents, which is uh, a, a nativist American rejection of the demographics that are currently uh, changing America and increasing the divisions within America. I think DeSantis is a much more uh, focused, disciplined and serious operative and would be um, therefore a much more effective implementer of such policies. And therefore I would expect if DeSantis were to win the nomination, win the presidency, that we would see an America that is likely to be more protectionist in a more focused way, uh, less interested in Europe, and perhaps also less interested in actually a full-blown engagement with China. Uh, it's very significant that the commentary in Republican circles, including from DeSantis, over raising questions about the money being spent on Ukraine, for example, was really saying, well, why are we spending this money? Because it could be spent at home on a range of, of uh, policies that would actually better the lives of ordinary Americans. That, that's the view. And I think that that would apply also to efforts in Asia Pacific. A DeSantis America would be a much more inward looking America. And that is obviously very bad news for anybody in the UK that is hoping to have a, a closer special relationship. Can you say a bit more about, uh, about Ireland, both, both for DeSantis if he gets elected uh, and for Biden, how, how important in the bilateral relationship between the United Kingdom uh, and the United States of America it is uh, Ireland and the Northern Ireland Protocol in particular? Well, I think the Northern Ireland Protocol is extremely important. The Irish uh, vote, the Irish cultural influence in America is very, very strong. 
But I think the, the more intriguing question is going to be whether this is also true of uh, tensions with Scotland. Uh, it's quite clear that the Americans would want a, a deal on the protocol. It's quite clear that Americans overall support the notion of United Ireland. What would American attitudes towards an independent Scotland be, however, or the prospect of that, given the fact there are also, of course, strategic implications with the location of Faz Lane and the rest, is a more complicated question. But one has to recognise that there are, although the, the Irish heritage population and, and electorate in America has a very high profile, there is also a Scottish diaspora too that is significant. Would you say that it's uh, a Scottish diaspora in the United States that, that on the whole favours um, Scottish independence? Uh, it, that, that, that I, I think, is much less clear than the proposition that it's the Irish diaspora the in history America. Has been so, the, the, the history of, of Scotland and Ireland, vis-a-vis England, has been so different. But it's quite significant. I mean, Trump regarded himself as Scottish, among other things. I mean, he was German. I mean, his, his roots are, are obscure. But when he was... Um, uh, trying to construct a, his golf courses in Scotland. He made a big play of this and made remarks that um, were surprising from the point of view of any unionist. Now, you may dismiss that as him being, um, uh, being himself in his um, inimical manner, but it nevertheless shows that to, to take for granted American support for the British state, particularly in an environment of greater American isolationism, I think would be a mistake. I heard Biden um, making some remarks on the midterms yesterday, and he referred in passing to working together with allies, and he, he cited Asian allies, our allies in the EU, and our allies in South America. He didn't mention the United Kingdom specifically in that context. Um, do you think that the United Kingdom standing in the, Euro in the United States of America in general has been damaged by Brexit? I don't think there's any question. And I think that there are a whole range of other factors. I mean, uh, from the monarchy and what's been happening um, in uh, the economy recently that has diminished our position uh, in, in American thinking. I, I think there is a... An interesting point about uh, Sunak, uh, Rishi Sunak's premiership, and how that might be viewed. I think for, in some Republican circles, the um, evangelical Christian element is very important. And I think that the fact that Britain uh, has moved away from having a Christian premier is something which in some... Uh, Republican circles, which would otherwise be sympathetic to um, the Conservative Party and its uh, political interests, uh, would find that difficult. Um, I've heard this commented on. And another factor is, which might go in the other direction, is that for the United States, India is becoming much more important in its confrontation with China. And so it is possible that uh, there might be some role for the United Kingdom vis-a-vis -vis relations with India uh, that would help the Americans. And so it's not, it's not an, an absolutely clear picture. And of course, a, a further factor of that is that clearly from American strategic points of view vis-a-vis uh, -vis China, uh, the AUKUS deal and the links to Australia and New Zealand are very important, or are becoming more important because of the confrontation of China. So it is a somewhat mixed picture. What do you think um, uh, Biden's um, room for manoeuvre on foreign policy will be over the next couple of years? Will he be inhibited by the fact that, although the Democrats didn't do as badly as people hoped or feared, um, nevertheless, it's entirely possible that there will be majorities against him uh, in Congress? Well, it was um, Bill Clinton who said it's the economy is stupid. I mean, I think the, the problem with foreign policy for Biden and expressed by the support given for Ukraine and the rest is precisely the criticism that DeSantis and others have been making, which is that you know, the priority is to look after Americans. And in a more difficult economic environment, rising interest rates, a slowing economy and the rest, it may well be that Biden is able to get away with only a very shallow recession, we'll see. But uh, if, as some fear, the economic difficulties are, 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 are deep, more deeply seated, uh, then the priority of spending resources in America, onshoring American industries, 
um, from abroad, uh, building up American strategic capacity in, in areas like chips and, and, and other high-tech industries. All of this will become the part of the debate. And the Republican attack, if, certainly if it's DeSantis, will be very much that we should be looking after America and not, and not abroad. And with the Republican control of Congress, they will obviously have the capacity to block uh, some expenditure. And in particular, there's the issue of the uh, ceiling on the deficit, which will have to be voted and have to be approved um, by Congress. Thank you very much for that, for that John. Uh, it looks as if um, Brexit, the, the American aspect of Brexit, was just a, a, another everyday tale of Brexit folk based on uh, confusion, misconceptions and downright lies in some cases. It's something which has um, diminished our position in the United States um, and that process is going to continue. We'll be chronicling that uh, uh, and many other aspects of Brexit um, over the coming months and years to come in the Federal Trust. I hope you found this interesting and that you'll watch more of our videos on the website. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. It's one of a series of videos about Europe, about Brexit and about the future of the European Union uh, from the Federal Trust. Uh, I hope that you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you'll have notifications of future videos, which I hope you'll enjoy uh, as much as perhaps you enjoyed this one.